And the little subheading under fractions is adding and subtracting them. Adding and subtracting. Now I'm going to throw you an example, and then you're going to write down a couple little rules here. Uh, two fourths plus one fourth. Two fourth plus one fourth. This is another one of those things I'm a little bit of a stickler for. When you get to high school, you can do it any way you want. But right now, for me, you're going to do it like this. When you add or subtract fractions, the very first thing you will always, always do is. Hold. Um, what do you look at the bottom? Nah, nope, nope, nope. Don't get ahead of me. I was going to tell you, but since everybody seems to know. Jacob? Do you add the. Uh, Frankie? Do you look at the front? No, nope. well, oh. after obviously that. Sam? Do you add the top? Oh, my gosh. All right, number one, you are going to write the problem up and down. I can guarantee if you ask a 6th grader or a 7th grader or an 8th grader what the first rule would be, they will tell you this. Some of you won't do it and I will shun you until you do it, but you need to write it up and down. In other words, you are going to turn this problem, just like with addition, we write it up and down, you're going to do fractions up and down. Step number two. You are not going to have to do, but we're going to put it down because eventually you will. Step number two is you must, in order to add fractions together, they have to have the same bottom number. Okay. Step number two is make what we call common denominators. Common means the same. In which this one, you will be able to skip this step for a, a number of weeks probably. Right now you don't have to worry about step two. But rather than have you write all your notes when you do get to that point over again. Now, step number three gets to where everybody was raising their hands and telling me such things here. And if you take out your fraction pieces, which you don't have to, and you could actually add this together with your fraction pieces, what is, here comes the part where you can answer me on this. When you add fractions together, Addie Clark, you have to? Add the tops. All right. The first thing you do is add or subtract the tops, whatever you're doing in whatever case. And by the way, the top we call the numerator. So I add the two top numbers, which is 2 plus 1, and I get 3. And the next step is where people make some common mistakes here. Step number four, Trevor. You do not add the bottom. You do not, yes. You must keep the denominator the same. Keep the bottom the same, which is our denominator. In other words, when you add two fourths and one fourths, you get three fourths. You don't get three eighths, which would mean you'd end up getting something smaller than you would start with. Keep bottom the same. And there is a step five. Again, you won't have to worry about for a while, but eventually you will. Okay, know what step five is? It's one simple word. I can give you a hint there. It's one word that can mean a whole bunch of different things. Colin? Check. Nope. Frankie? Um, fish? It's called simplify. Um. Sometimes fractions, when after you add these together, they can be made simpler or easier to understand. You don't have to do that for right now, but you just have to do that. Two fourths plus one fourths is three fourths. There's a reason why people don't like fractions. They're not the easiest thing to do. They're not the hardest either. Simplify them. An example of simplifying is, you know, 
if you get the fraction two fourths, two fourths is not the easiest way we understand it. If you ate two fourths of a pizza, you actually ate half of it, and we always want to try to put the easiest thing down. You don't have to worry about that for now. How about this one? One and one half plus one half. And again, I don't really care if you can do this in your head, you still need to follow those directions. And step number one was to write it up and down, so you have to write it as one and one half plus one half. What do I get if I add a half plus a half? Well, Allie, you get two twos, right? And I get one and two twos, but I cannot leave that one like that because Allie, what I... Two twos equals one whole. Yeah. Two halves equals a whole, so I have to take that one whole and put it with the other whole I got. Now I've got two holes. What I'll put in those two holes, who knows? Uh, how about a subtraction one? Three and four tenths. Three and four tenths minus one and one tenth. Step number one, always write up and down, minus one and one tenth, I'm sorry, this was four tenths, wasn't it? What do you get if you subtract one tenth from four tenths, Victoria? It's three tenths. Three tenths, and if you take one away from three, you end up with a big three tenths, or a little two, or whatever. Please know, fifth graders, they start you very easy on the fraction world. It gets much, 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 did I say much? More yes. difficult no. as time goes by. But we'll take baby steps, and eventually you'll take one giant step 